What up, everybody? I'm eating Doritos. I'm sorry. Uh, we've gotten out of the airport, and we are in a hotel room in Baltimore. That is my dad. Say hi, dad. Hey, dude. We are right next to a new casino. The Horseshoe. There's people down. People don't know how to rub their pumpkins. So I'm going to properly show you how to rub your pumpkin. Here we go. What you do is you take your pumpkin and you cradle it in your arms like so. And you give it a good smack. Like that. You just rub the pumpkin like that. You very rub the pumpkin. So you take the pumpkin and you just start rubbing the pumpkin. Now it's very important to rub the pumpkin before you uh, carve it into a jack-o'-lantern. It's very important. So now I'm going to show you how to rub the pumpkin. I'm here today to talk to you about a very powerful little word. One that people will do almost anything to avoid becoming. I'm not sure if any of you have noticed, but I'm fat. Let's not sugarcoat it. I am the capital F-A-T kind of fat. I am the elephant in the room. When I walked out on stage, some of you may have been thinking, oh, this is going to be hilarious, because everybody knows that fat people are funny. <laughs> or you may have been thinking, where does she get her confidence from? Because a confident fat woman is almost unthinkable. These judgments are insidious. They can be directed at individuals and groups, and they can also be directed at ourselves. And this way of thinking is known as fat phobia. Like any form of systematic oppression, fat phobia is deeply rooted in complex structures like capitalism, patriarchy, and racism. We live in a culture where being fat is seen as being a lazy, greedy, unhealthy, irresponsible, and we tend to see thinness as being universally good responsible and in control of our appetites, bodies, and lives. We see these ideas again and again in the media, in public health policy, doctor's offices, in everyday conversations, and in our own attitudes. This anti-fat bias has become so integral, so ingrained to how we value ourselves and each other, that we rarely question why we have such contempt for people of size. And do we really want to live in a society where people are denied their basic humanity if they don't subscribe to some arbitrary form of acceptable? The real elephant in the room here is fat phobia. We can shift society's reluctance to embrace diversity and start to celebrate the myriad of ways there are to have a body. To me, it's almost like reverting back to the civil rights movement. Now we're telling fat folks that they have to buy an extra seat not too long ago, my grandparents had to sit on the back of a bus. It's like, it's almost like segregating folks based on the way Where, they look. I, I can't imagine. Did you're you a, really say that? Calm I, down. I, Don't act like you're, you, you, you're offended by KKK. You're, you, I, I mean, you're so offended by me saying that you're approaching so tough. Why you keep so acting like tough? a victim, though? That's I, what I, I like I, to know. I, I, may may I, in the no, you, first of all, you know, let me... Well, I don't think we can let something about the KKK just sit there. I find that so incredibly offensive and, and offensive to the people who at the hands of that despicable organization have suffered. You are coming from a totally different place than Jillian Why is coming from. Why would you project something like that on Because today? you're projecting it on it. If it is what it is, I would respect you so much more. Say what it is. You have a problem with fat people. I would respect you so much more if you said, look, fatty, I can't stand you. I hate you. I Get the weight off. No, I understand you're passionate about this. You know, this is a picture of you with your grandmother. And you obviously... I obviously hate her, don't I? Just hate her. Yeah. Hate my mom, hate my dad. Why could you say something like that? You know nothing about me other than the propaganda. You know nothing May about I finish me. one statement? You know nothing I about me. I haven't gotten me. to finish one statement. If you read my blog, if you go to actionagainstobesity.com, if you go to findingfin.com, you'll find out what I really am. And then if you want to criticize me, criticize me. Don't criticize me based on what the pro-fat movement writes about me. I, I, I wouldn't like that website. person either. I did, I did go to your website. If you say. But don't say if that I, I hate a certain group of people when Nothing could be further from the truth. Um, I have two, one, two comments to make. First, I want to direct this to Miss Skinny Minnie. 
Um, Wait, which hit, which Miss Skinny Mini? Um, isn't her name Mimi or Skinny Mini? Yeah, okay, Mimi? Mimi. Well, the skinniest girl up there. Anyways, um, she made a comment that you have to have a lot of willingness and motivation I to be skinny. I was quoting Dr. Kelly Brownell of Yale. That's what he said. I don't care who, who you was quoting. You said it, own it. I agree with him, okay. absolutely. Okay, good. But I'm a plus size model. I am willing and motivated to wake up every day to keep these curves. I don't want to wake up and look like you and be confused and quoting everybody. Why don't you say what you have to say and stand up for what you believe? Oh, I was just tagging on to she was talking about the same Yale Center, so. Okay, okay let, me, let me ask you a question while you're standing up. Why is it okay for you to call her skinny mini? <laughs> But it's not okay for her to comment about someone's size that's that's larger. Well, <laughs> I don't know her name. So, okay, you got me on that, but moving on. No chubbies. <clears throat> no chubbies. No, I got no, 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 no chubbies. No, 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 you said it. Own it. <laughs> <laughs> the difference is that she insulted when she was called skinny. Okay. Yeah. Hi, my name's Kath Reed. I'm a fat activist in Brisbane. I blog at Fat Heffalump, um, where I've been blogging for about five years. And it's my goal to change the way people think about fatness. I always thought I was fat. One of my earliest memories, I was called fat. I've always been called fat. And I believe that the worst thing a person could possibly be was fat. Through my teens and 20s and early 30s, I just battled it in every single way I could. You name the diet, I was on it. Um, you name the uh, weight loss plan, I was on it. I believed that I couldn't do anything in life that was good until I was thin. I couldn't have any form of success, couldn't have a good job, couldn't have um, a, a loving relationship, couldn't be happy in any way. So I didn't try. I haven't always been fat. I was actually a regular sized little girl and when I was 17 I was actually diagnosed with type 1 diabetes. <laughs> disrespects me or my family one of these days I will hunt you down with a fucking knife and kill you and so will my fucking backup my friends and everybody will go and find you the destruction of this scale is dedicated to all of the women whose lives have been ruined and ruled by it. This is for us, ladies. Safety first. Oops. I'm tired of you stealing my life. I'm tired of you making me feel if I'm good or bad. I'm tired of you deciding how my day is. No more of you deciding my life. No more of you stealing life from me. This is death. I take back my life. I'm in control. I decide if I'm good or bad. Nag you, I deserve a great life. This is about me. This isn't about you. Oh my God. That's like better than sex. Or no! about marginalized groups and dominant groups, or occasionally minority groups and dominant groups. What a dominant group is, 
It is the group that has a particular privilege over the minority group. For instance, though I don't want to compare struggles, this is just an example. Um, in this country, and in most countries, people of color are sincerely and genuinely disadvantaged in comparison to white folk. This is because of a plethora of reasons, mostly because we live in a racist, fucking shitty society. This lack of equality we call racism. It is in form of institutional, individual, and cultural oppression. This means that white folk have privilege over folks of color. This is because precisely that we live in a racist society. Now, this applies to a lot of things. Homophobia, sexism, fatphobia. For instance, I'm fat. Because I am fat, there is a whole list of things that happen to me that don't happen to thin people solely based on my size. Now, I could go over a huge list and tell you of all the ways that I get treated like shit because I'm fat, but I really don't have the time. And quite frankly,